So let me introduce um, our keynote address. Um, Kathy Parker is a reading specialist at Woodlawn Elementary, and she is a 2004 graduate of PSU GTAP. She is an educator who has 23 years of teaching experience, and she is someone who is near and dear to my heart. Kathy is one of the individuals um, who helped inspire and motivate me. I was blessed to um, complete a year-long um, coursework in her classroom, in her secondary classroom. I still have the picture that they gifted me at the end of my, um, of my year. And so it's just really an honor to be in the room, to be on the same stage as this dynamic sister. So I will stop talking and I will hand it over to Ms. Kathy Parker. Kathy, you're muted. There Thank you, go. Paula. I just realized that. I was trying to like, oh, oh, <laughs> I'm muted. Thank you, Paula. Uh, I was blessed to have you in my classroom. I just want to say that uh, right up front. So thank you so much. And I apologize. Uh, I've been learning a lot about technology, teaching online. So please forgive me. Um, before I begin, I want to just share this little quote or saying with you, uh, because it speaks to who I am and what I believe. Um, when I'm instructing in my practices as a professional educator, it says actions speak louder than words. A person's action will tell you everything you need to know. My purpose and desire have always been to strive to be a teacher with a good leadership skills, a positive representation for all students. And because of my own experience in education, specifically for students of color, my desire grew after consistently hearing messages from all of my white teachers. I didn't have one teacher of color going through my education until I reached college. They would tell me, don't worry about getting high grades or passing tests. We know that black students don't do as well as other students just do your best. And I remember thinking throughout my education, isn't that the job of a teacher to educate and motivate all students setting high expectations, regardless of their skin color? All my education and my life experiences in education came through hard work and through the Portland Teachers Program, which is a program with a vision of social justice through teaching, learning, and dismantling oppressive systems for underrepresented students. It equipped me and prepared me as a teacher of color to listen, learn, and serve. All these education and experiences for me equipped and prepared me to graduate with honors from Portland State University grad teacher education program, which is GTAP. Um, GTAP, their current vision, I'm gonna read it to you, it's a quote. If Ross, if you can put that up for me. This is what it says currently. It prepares you to be part of a new wave of progressive K-12 teachers as America's school becomes more racially and ethnically diverse serving students with different cultures, languages, and abilities, our teachers need to adapt. The College of Education will equip you to teach in an inclusive and equitable environment, utilizing the latest technology to help you to succeed. You will be a teacher who helps each student succeed on their own unique terms. This is their current. Sounds good. I think it sounds good. The vision sounds really good and can be motivating to new teachers. But remember the quote, action speaks louder than words. My first job was at Woodlawn Elementary, a Title I school. I was hired as a second grade teacher. And at the time only, it was over 75% of students were students of color and 50% of those students were reading below grade level. 
So through trial and error of my first year, I realized even after graduating with honors that I was neither equipped nor prepared to teach reading. So I struggled. I depended only, I depended only on the information given in teacher's manuals to learn about spoken word and written language concepts to generate strategies for teaching students to read. However, since my graduate education program and the reading curriculum in our building lack the content necessary to teach basic reading skills, I began my own study of scientific basic research on beginning reading instruction. I learned, my re I learned through my research that reading is a language-based activity. Reading doesn't develop naturally. And for many children, specific decoding and word recognition and reading comprehension skills must be taught directly and explicitly. So my greatest disappointment from my unpreparedness to teach reading was it's a negative effect on my students of color. I wanted them to be successful and having and have good reading skills, which is a foundation to start with. So the veteran teachers in my building were telling me, it's not your fault, Mrs. Parker. Instead, they were ensuring me with statements like, Black students specifically lack reading skills and strategies because of their own unfortunate, unfortunate circumstances like low income, illiteracy, parents, single families, foster behavior issues, homelessness, and the list went on and on and on and on. However, I didn't want to accept those racial bias statements. I knew as a previous student of color, I experienced those same circumstances and they did not prevent me from learning how to read. So my urgency in teaching my black students to read was knowing that unless students learn to read at an early age, they are highly likely to remain poor readers and suffer academic difficulties across all subjects, which meant that black students without reading skills will continue to suffer injustice and racial bias. And we oftentimes I've heard them labeled as thugs in our society. I felt that my unpreparedness was a disservice to my students who had to move to the next grade without sufficient reading skills. So it broke my heart and I felt that I had failed them. Over the years in my teaching career, I just started to equip and prepare myself. I did my own research on science-based teaching practice for reading and I went back to school for my reading endorsement, took classes on working with diverse learners, read a lot of books, volunteered to go to workshops specifically for teaching reading and rec recognizing dyslexia. So during my last, <laughs> during my last uh, teaching years of second grade, before I went to become a reading specialist, I remember a young black boy in my class who was new to, my, to, to the school and he whispered to me in a reading group, he said, I'm sorry, Mrs. Parker, I don't know how to read and I don't know what I'm gonna do. And so that touched my heart. And so using my approach to teaching explicit systematic instruction and in reading that I had learned on my own, most of my students of color were able to read at grade level the next year. In fact, I learned that when he went to third grade, he no longer needed any intervention. He was at benchmark. So that was a plus for me. Three years ago, I was asked to become the reading specialist at my school where I taught for 13 years as a second grade teacher. This year, I'm participating in letters, the language essentials for teachers of reading and spelling program. And I'm part of a reading interventionist program. So I continue to stay updated in practice that provide success in reading. Unfortunately, teachers continue to be unprepared to teach reading after graduating from different educational programs like PSU's GTAP program. Uh, Ross, can I get that slide? So it's evident, uh, this slide shows, uh, go back. Yes, that slide. So we see this slide, this is a slide of the Oregon third grade reading rates. And if you can see this, 
which when I speak by evidence of teachers not being able to, to be prepared to teach reading, you notice that there's that all, all third grade students, only 47% are being taught to read. And then if you notice after that, students of color fall behind and look at the black students. Only 26% are being taught to read. This is not okay. The, the use of data should invoke meaningful change in our instruction and implementation. The data here clearly shows that our instruction and reading for our students of color and especially for our black students are not effective. So then it creates an environment of illiteracy for all of our students of color, and especially our black students, our families and community. Here is a, I love this saying by Maya Angelou, elimination of illiteracy is a serious an issue to our history as abolishment of slavery. I recently heard from a Oregon Department of Education speaker who said our students are our present and not just our future. We always hear children are our future. I believe that. If we're not teaching explicit, systematic, science-based reading skills in our elementary classrooms, we are failing our students and creating an environment where our students of, of color continue to be denied their civil rights and labeled as criminals and failures in our society. Our present action will recreate our students' future. So our students' present is so important, especially in teaching reading. So according to the next slide, if you can see that pillars of early literacy, if you notice way down here, now this is the average number of components taught by traditional programs in each state, programs that teach phonemic awareness, phonics, fluency, vocabulary. If you notice Oregon, we're way down. It looks like we won. This is not okay. And this is probably the reason that our kids are failing in reading. Recently, the Oregon Department of Education wrote a statement from their Black Lives Matter resolution. This was like in October, I believe. And this is what it says. Uh oh, sorry. Urgent request that Oregon school districts, public charter schools and education service districts communicate to students, families, employees and their communities that policies and practices and their commitment to providing all students with high quality public education regardless of race. I just let that marinate right now. We are not doing that. In closing, I bring your attention back to my previous quote, which should speak to all graduate education programs, Oregon Department of Education, school board members, professional educators and administrators. Action speaks louder than words. A person's action will tell you everything you need to know. We must provide equity for all students, especially our students who for generations have suffered the most inequities in education. And that's our students of color. We have to do better. Thank you.